I'd like to call the 20th regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. May today be filled with happy memories of the past and bright hopes for the future. Thank you very much. Would the clerk uh, please call the roll? Alderperson Lewandowski, are you there? Yeah. There are 14 present. And Alderperson Holshue and Boren are excused this evening. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Aye. Item 1.4 is the presentation, Human Trafficking Awareness by Detective Tamara Remington from the Sheboygan Police Department. Governor Walker recently issued a proclamation designating January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And uh, please step up to the podium. And that copy of that uh, proclamation is on your desks. My name is Tamara Remington. I'm with Sheboygan Police Department. And um, I'm also a member of the Federal Human Trafficking Task Force for Southeastern Wisconsin. Um, I've been a member of the Federal Task Force since 2013, and I've been handling numerous um, sex trafficking cases um, here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin since then. <coughs> I just wanted to let everybody know that um, we'll often hear that Sheboygan ranks number two in Wisconsin for human trafficking cases. And while that may be um, the case, it's not necessarily a negative thing. Um, just so you know, um, human trafficking is officially documented in all 72 counties of Wisconsin. Uh, and that's something that um, it's officially documented, and I'm very proud of Sheboygan um, in our awareness piece. Um, we are uh, very, I think we're very much ahead of the curve um, with the awareness, and um, I really commend the people of Sheboygan for um, having presentations. It's not the prettiest of topics, but it's it's a fact. It's, it's nationwide, um, it's absolutely in Wisconsin, and it's here in Sheboygan. So, um, it's more due to the awareness that we're number two. Um, the actual definition of human trafficking, um, human trafficking is the overall umbrella. There are two types of human trafficking. There's labor trafficking, which accounts for 20% of the human trafficking. And then the majority of human trafficking is sex trafficking, that's 80%. And that's um, nationwide, uh, worldwide, and also in Wisconsin, and I would venture to say also in Sheboygan. However, we don't have any active labor trafficking cases um, being prosecuted right now. Um, the definition too, so labor and sex trafficking, um, domestic and international, um, and it involves men, women, boys and girls um, in various capacities. Um, just so you know, in southeastern Wisconsin, the youngest victim um, we have documented is two years old, sold for sex, and up to elderly and everything in between. So I really um, urge all of us um, as community members to open our eyes, um, not just kind of um, get stuck in stereotypes of what we think the victims are, all races, all sizes, all shapes. So again, from age two and under, up to elderly and everything in between. Um, human trafficking, sex trafficking is the obtaining, the recruiting, the harboring, the transporting or the selling of a human being for commercial sex acts, using force, fraud or coercion or providing or withholding drugs. Um, but if the victim is under 18, um, so a juvenile, then you don't even need the force, fraud or coercion. Um, I do have to say in all of my cases, I've, I have uh, dozens of cases and all but one have involved the drugging of subjects. So I'm really glad that we have the Wisconsin statute, which is ahead of the, uh, the federal statute. It doesn't even have the providing or withholding drugs. So again, we're lucky to have that. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, let you know about is the awareness that we're doing here in Sheboygan. Um, besides being a member of the uh, federal task 
task force, I'm also, uh, I was invited to join um, a work group to work for all of Wisconsin to come up with a, a indicator tool that I, I have some extras to for the audience. But this is an indicator tool um, in which we can predict high-risk um, victims um, of sex trafficking. A new law went into effect um, May 29th of 2017. Um, another way that Sheboygan is ahead of the curve is our chief uh, let us um, use the Dallas Police Department model in predicting high-risk victims. And then by doing that since 2015, for the last two years, we were able to predict the high-risk victims, the runaways and such, and provide wraparound services to prevent um, further victimization. So I really do appreciate that we um, have have achieved that ahead of the you know the thinking process. And I know Madison was pleased with that too. Another uh, way that we're lucky in Sheboygan is our prosecution rate. I work with detectives all over Wisconsin, and I'm told by detectives all over that. Um, their district attorneys are hesitant to take these cases. They're very difficult, time-consuming cases, and we're lucky to have uh, Joel Armansky, who takes all of my human trafficking cases, <coughs> prosecutes them. Uh, we have one big case going next week, as a matter of fact. Um, just really quickly, um, some more goals that we have. Um, there's a wonderful program called Ending the Game. Um, the game is what we refer to as you know, life in, in the being sex trafficked. And uh, once somebody enters that life, it's, it's a very traumatic life. And the only way to get out of that life is to break the cycle through something such as ending the game programming. We, um, in mentioning this to the community members, they raised money to fund um, eight women to go through the program this past summer. And um, I, a future goal is to get it into our jail, where I currently have at least a dozen young women who are actually asking to go through ending the game so that they don't keep going through this terrible cycle um, tra of trauma. Another thing that our goal, our goal is to eventually have a transitional living facility, hopefully. Um, so far, um, we have to uh, send our survivors elsewhere. A new home just opened up in Green Bay called Rose Home, so we're very excited. It's already full, um, and they do have ending the game uh, programming there. I did pass out um, some of the signs to look for, and I have extra copies for the, the audience. But signs to look for, and this is something that the community can get involved in as a whole. I think as a community, we owe it um, to, to the community and our, our loved ones. Because as I said before, anybody can become a victim. Um, the, the main thing that everybody has in common is that they're vulnerable, and all human beings are vulnerable at some point in their lives. Um, signs to look for um, if somebody is, you know, has somebody always in control of them or they're not able to speak for themselves. Um, noticing brandings, tattoos, scars, that kind of thing. Um, it's not 100% um, an indicator, but that in combination with um, numerous um, motel keys, um, injuries, fear of law enforcement um, or um, speaking out, um, or uh, people hanging out with um, a much older crowd. These are signs to look for. And uh, so I have the, the additional signs to look for for the, rest of the uh, audience. Um, one, one quick thing too, we're lucky to have the partnerships. Um, we, Sheboygan Police Department works in, in conjunction with Runaway Youth Services, Horizons for Girls, STARS, um, Love Inc. We're, we're very lucky to have all of these groups and we're all on the same page. And as I said before, a new law went into effect um, May 29th of 2017 in which CPS now has to take um, all um, child sex trafficking cases even if it's a non-caregiver issue. So we meet regularly with CPS to make sure that we are providing proper services to high-risk children and youth of Sheboygan. So thank you all for being a part of the solution and um, thank you for your time tonight. Tamara, thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs> Do we have anyone signed up for the public forum this evening? There is no one tonight. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to Mayor's announcements. I'd like to uh, call up Dan Brady. 
Dan Brady retired from the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant on January 2nd of 2018 after nearly 37 years of service. As the lead wastewater operator, Dan was instrumental in ensuring that the wastewater treatment plant met all compliance obligations and was responsible for setting up many of the processes and control strategies that have helped the plant to succeed. Dan was also responsible for training and mentoring the operators, including Brian Willardson, who was awarded the Wisconsin Wastewater Operators Association Newcomer of the Year Award in 2013, and Tyler Hoffman, who received the same award in 2016. Dan was also recognized as a leader in the wastewater field, winning the George Bernauer Award in 2015, which recognizes operators for successful plant performance and outstanding contributions to the field of wastewater technology in the state of Wisconsin. Throughout his career, Dan has been very committed to the facility and to his profession, as was demonstrated during the recent transition between superintendents, when Dan took on additional responsibilities to ensure a smooth transition. Dan was a, very, is, was a very respected member of the wastewater team and had a positive influence on everyone at the wastewater treatment plant. Dan, I'm very pleased to uh, congratulate you on your retirement, and I want to give you the certificate of appreciation from the city of Sheboygan to Dan Brady for his 37 years of dedicated service and employee of the wastewater treatment plant from February 16th of 1981 to January 2nd of 2018. Dan, congratulations. I'll make this quick. Um, I just wanted to say that it's probably hard for a lot of uh, people to visualize how anybody that amassed almost 38 years at a wastewater treatment plant can truly be honored and, and, um, and privileged to have worked there. Um, but I can honestly say that I have been honored, honored and privileged to work for the city for 38 years. Um, I have uh, have been fortunate enough to work under five superintendents. Uh, two of them are here tonight and some great staffs and uh, some of those are here tonight also. Um, I just wanted to thank the current and, and previous common councils and current and previous uh, public works committees for their support of the wastewater treatment plant. Um, that, that being said, I, I challenge the public any time that they can you know, have, a, have the opportunity to take a tour out there. Um, it's not what you think it is. I think you're going to find it's not, not only educational, but you're going to be impressed with the, uh, with the overall operations. So again, thank you very much. Today we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and I'd like to share a quote from an appearance that I made at UW-Madison on November 23rd of 1965. A piece of freedom is not enough for us as human beings. A piece of liberty no longer suffices. Freedom is like life. Freedom is one thing and it's indivisible. You have to have it all or you're not free. Just a little remembrance of Dr. King and his work. Um, next, I'd like to mention the um, Sheboygan Fire Department was very busy last Friday evening in Sheboygan. First, there was a structure fire reported on North Avenue. They responded to that, and then a call came in for a car fire at another location. And then next, the fire department received a call uh, about a fire on the roof of the NEMAC production facility on Gateway Drive. The fire department had to call in nine off-duty firefighters and issue a Mambus um, call for assistance from eight other fire departments and surrounding communities. At the staff meeting today, Mike Romas complimented all the firefighters and paramedics, the mutual aid help from the other fire departments, the assistance from the Sheboygan Police Department, and also the great job that was done by uh, Sheboygan County Combined Dispatch. And we have a couple of victims, and there's uh, some fundraising efforts going on. Uh, an 18-year-old, Ian Nespazzi, was injured in the fire with burns and smoke inhalation, and he's in an induced coma right now in a hospital. He's uh, receiving further treatment, and a GoFundMe account has been set up to help Ian and his mother, Pam. To date, there's $12,391 that's been raised. Uh, this is far short of the goal for $80,000 to help this family out. If you'd like to participate uh, and help the Nespazzi family, go to GoFundMe.com and uh, search for the Sheboygan Family Fire. And then there's also a house to the east that was also uh, uh, caught on fire. And Matt Stewart lived next door. And there's also a GoFundMe um, account for him. And that's help 
house fire victim. That's what you search on when you go to GoFundMe.com. And uh, so far today, uh, the Department of Public Works Streets Division has put out three updates on their plowing operations. I just want to share this one for overnight. The forecasts are calling for an additional two to three inches through Tuesday morning. The DPW plow trucks will start focusing on the neighborhood streets this evening. The trucks will be plowing the even side of the streets to accommodate winter parking rules. There is a scheduled driver shift at 1130. When the third shift drivers come in, they'll focus on the odd side of the streets. Um, and loader tractors will also be working to clean up the dead ends and cul-de-sacs this evening. And the Department of Public Works also requests that residents utilize all off-street parking options uh, if they can overnight. Uh, the department will provide additional updates as the storm progresses. The DPW thanks all citizens for their patience as uh, they clear o the, as the city clears over 200 miles of city streets. Now, these public uh, information updates are posted on the city's website. Uh, they're on their Twitter account and also on Nextdoor. So if anybody would like to receive these on a regular basis during the storm, you just need to subscribe to one of those options. Okay, next we'll go on to the consent agenda. Uh, that'll include items 2.2 through 2.9. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Could I, uh, I would like to request 2.9 be pulled for a separate vote. Okay, we'll take that one first. Please proceed with your discussion. I received a phone call today from a constituent and they were going to be here and attend this meeting and ask a question regarding this issue. Uh, due to the weather, they were unable to be here. So um, I, I would just like to put their question out um, to the, the fire chief. And that question was uh, based on uh, the average number of structural fires, uh, there's average about one a month. Uh, they were wondering why we need to order this piece of equipment and spend this kind of money if that's the case. Chief Romas, would you like to come forward and answer that question? Thank you for your question, Alderman. Um, or your constituents question. Um, that statistic is true. Um, they're talking about working structure fires. We have many other fires in the city. An area ladder is used for more than just fires. It's used to protect exposures. If we would have had an aerial up yesterday at that fire on North, we could have stopped that second building from catching fire. So sometimes it's used to put water on a building so that it doesn't catch fire. Um, we also use it, it can be used to transport equipment and personnel. We've had two fires at NEMAC in the last eight months. We had a fire about eight months ago uh, during the summer, and because we didn't have the adequate area ladder that I would like to purchase now, um, our firefighters had to carry up 38 fire extinguishers to the roof of NEMAC on a cat ladder, which is a straight vertical ladder. If we would have had this truck there, we could have put these extinguishers and personnel in the bucket and sent it right to the roof and it would have been a lot faster and a lot safer and a lot better. So this, this truck that we want to purchase uh, that we're able to get is, is a lot better than a straight aerial ladder. And because of the benefits that Pierce are um, offering to us right now, um, we're, we can get a really nice truck for less money and more features. Okay. so. Just to be clear, this apparatus isn't a direct replacement. This is a, a much different piece of equipment than what you Co Correct. It's, an, it's a definitely an upgrade from what we have now. In fact, one of our aerials is out of service, the one that was closest to the fire. The rams are uh, not operating, and they're going to be replaced soon, but they haven't been replaced yet. So the, it's a quint, so it operates as an engine and a truck, and that's another thing. All of our heavies, engines and trucks, have tanks of water on them. So they're not just an aerial ladder, they're also an engine, so we have dual capabilities. 
So they serve many purposes. In addition to uh, carrying extra equipment to the scene, they're bigger and have more storage space. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Okay, we're voting separately on item 2.9. Would the clerk please call the roll? Scott? Yes. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Um, items. We got a vote on. The I'm motion. sorry. We've got a vote on the the main motion on the remaining items. That's 2.2 .2 through 2.8. The clerk, please call the roll on those. Scott. Yes. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.4 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Under um, reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 212 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred Resolution number 121 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to advertise for a request for proposal from qualified vendors for the establishment and operation of an authentic German beer garden concession at Qantas Park area number eight in the city of Sheboygan recommends the resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Scott? Nay. <coughs> 13 I is one no. Motion passes. Under other matters, items 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. And next we have a contemplated closed session. We've got another matter. Oh, sorry. One. Have other ones? Go ahead. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018 and June 30, 2019. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Now Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub E Wisconsin stats where competitive bargaining re uh, reasons require the closed session possible acquisition of property known as the parcel 59024346371 formerly known as Polarware Polar Wear LLC. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Scott? Yes. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a short three minute recess. Uh, for our viewers at home, uh, the council will be adjourning in closed session, so this will end our TV transmission. And all our priests and Lee Wendowski will have to sign off because you're not allowed in closed sessions uh, remotely. With that, we'll take a short okay. recess. <laughs>